All right. We're going to do another work kinetic energy theorem problem, but this time we are going to have friction, so it's not a conservation of mechanical energy problem. So I have a car moving at 14 meters per second. It's going to slam on the brakes and skid to a stop. The coefficient of friction between the tires and the road is 0.8, and I do want to figure out how far is it going to skid to a stop. So I start asking myself those questions. Is there someone applying a force to that car to get it from here to here? No, so there's no work in. Is there friction? Yes, there is friction. So there is going to be work done by friction. I do have to identify points 1 and 2, so I start at point 1, end at point 2. Um, I will choose a height of 0 to be at the ground level. So at point 2, it does come to a stop, so K2 is 0. It's moving at point 1, so I do have K1. Um, height 1 and height 2 are both 0, and there's no springs in my problem. So I can reduce my equation down to work done by friction equals negative K1. I'm not trying to find work done by friction. I'm not trying to find K1, so I'm going to substitute for those. Now, if you'll remember, work done by friction is going to be the force of friction times the displacement. Now, remember, these do have directions on them. So I do need to put a negative sign on that to indicate that on my car, the force of friction is acting in this direction. Gravity is acting down, normal force is up. So this is my negative direction. So I do need a negative sign on that force of friction equals negative one-half mv squared. All right. Force of friction, what do we do with that? Well, last chapter we did substitute, 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 so we're going to try that again. So instead of force of friction, we're going to substitute in mu times the normal force equals negative one-half mv squared. Something to check as you're doing these problems with friction. Make sure you have that negative sign. Friction usually does negative work if it's slowing something down. And then displacement tends to get dropped off as we make a bunch of substitutions here. So make sure when you get to the end you have that negative and that displacement. We have one more substitution here for normal force. So how do I solve for normal force? Well, I sum up the forces in the y direction. In this case, my car is not accelerating in the y direction. So I set it equal to zero. Normal force minus mg equals zero. So the normal force is equal to mg. And so I can make that substitution as well. So I have negative mu mg times s equals negative one-half mv squared. And if you were starting off at these substitutions and you saw this m over here and you said, hey, we didn't know the mass of the car, it's okay. Keep solving. Eventually it will cancel out for you as it does here. Normal force is not always equal to mg. You have to draw your free body diagram, sum up those forces, and solve for it. All right, at this point I am going to solve for s. So I do have a negative sign on both sides, which I can get rid of. Solve for s by dividing the mu g over. So I have s is equal to um, v squared divided by 2 mu g. So in our case of a 14 meter per second car with a coefficient of friction of 0.8, my distance traveled is going to be 12.5 meters. Now, there is one other question that we can answer with this. So. You're driving down the road, speed limit says 25, how fast are you going? 30, of course. So you're driving 30 miles an hour, you get to a school zone. What's the speed limit say? 15 when kids are present. Why do they make you slow down in a school zone? Well, if you slow down from 30 to 15, you have went ahead and you decreased your velocity by a factor of 2. But velocity is squared. So what's a half squared? Well, a half squared is a fourth. So you will decrease your distance that it takes you to stop in that school zone by a factor of four when you slow down. 